Okay, so good afternoon everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us just right after the lunch. Um, so I know it's a bit lazy. Uh, I will try to, I will try my level best to make you entertain as much as I can, okay? Okay, so today we will be discussing GERTS. GERTS is a migration tool which migrates resources from other clouds to OpenStack, okay? Um, so my name is Bharat Kumar. Uh, I'm an OpenStack specialist at Aptera. So how many of you know Aptera? So Aptera is uh, Asia Pacific's uh, leading OpenStack services company. So it leads, I um, mean, it maintains private cloud, or public cloud and hybrid cloud, as well as it also provides technology training to the country, uh, to the OpenStack specialist and all. So it has many things. So I was leading GUTS project. I was designing, so designing, developing, and maintaining the GUTS project in Aptera. So yeah, so why we have to migrate? Why, why we have to migrate? So here I'm telling, um, I'm using the word migrate. Here migrate is nothing but migrating the instance, migrating the resource or workload, all these three are same. Okay, so workload can be either a mission or a application or a volume, it can be anything, okay? So why we have to migrate? Let us suppose I have taken an instance in Amazon AWS long back. Later, um, one, uh, one thought I came to my mind, so I just want to move it to OpenStack Cloud, OpenStack Public Cloud or OpenStack my own private cloud. So how can I do that? I can't simply rewrite all my application in the new OpenStack Cloud, right? I have, there should be a tool or there should be a mechanism to migrate my instance from AWS to OpenStack public or private cloud, okay? So not only from AWS, so it can be VMware or Hyper-V or in vice versa. So we, we should be able to migrate OpenStack resources to AWS and um, uh, to Hyper-V. So we should be able to do in both ways. Okay, so this is what the migration is. Hope the migration word is clear, okay. So can we do the migration manually? So can we do the migration of instance or a volume or a network manually? Yes, we can do it, absolutely we can do it. But so what is the problem in this, okay? So there are lots of, uh, there are lots of documents available, lots of blocks available if you Google for it. So how to migrate an instance from AWS to OpenStack or uh, Hyper-V to VMware, anything. So you will get lots of blocks. If you follow those blocks, you will get all the details, okay? How to migrate, how to convert the disk. So what are all the tools you need to install? So everything, you will get it. But there are many difficulties. We spent a lot of time talking with the uh, administrators and all, knowing what are the difficulties they are facing in the migration phase. So the migration process depends on the type of cloud, okay? So what is the source cloud and what is the destination cloud? So it depends on the source and destination clouds, the migration process vary. So migrating instance from VMware to OpenStack, there are separate steps, and migrating the instance from um, uh, AWS to OpenStack, separate procedure, okay? So that depends on the type of cloud we are using. Okay, and it also depends on type of the instance or type of the resource, okay, which type of resource it is. If the instance is of Windows mission, the steps will vary. So we have to, uh, that is formatting, everything is different. Okay, so if the instance type is of Linux, that is different, okay. So, so it depends on the type of the cloud as well as the type of the instance, okay. So it's not, it's not the same way to migrate everything. Okay, and the second thing is, so there are some hypervisor specific tools, okay? So if we are booting instance in VMware, it requires VMware tools. If you're booting instance in OpenStack, it requires Vetiva tools, okay? So when we are migrating, we also need to take care of those tools, okay? So we need to remove the VMware tools as we are moving out of VMware, and we have to install Vetiver tools as we are moving into OpenStack. So we have to manage everything. We have to uh, we have to do everything manually, okay? And so there can be too much amount of data. So uh, one instance is nothing but a single 
single disk, it can have many disks attached to it. So maybe in terabytes of data, so petabytes, so we should be able to migrate everything in a secure way, okay? So the same process, okay? So all these are acceptable, okay? So I can do all these things of my own manually. I can follow the blocks. I can follow all the tools and all. But I can do it for one or two resources. I can migrate one or two instances. But let's imagine I have total uh, hundreds of instances, hundreds of resources. How can I do all those? So it's very repetitive and very complicated steps. So to do that, so we need to have an automated tool to migrate everything at once, okay? So the, the migration should be simple. So we should be able to migrate the instances in a simpler way, in an automated way, okay? So this is where GUTS came into the picture, okay? So what is GUTS actually? So GUTS is a workload migration engine which migrates, which automatically moves the resources from, from traditional clouds to the open stack. So those traditional clouds can be VMware, AWS, Hyper-V, anything. So, so that's what the GUTS, GUTS is. Here what GUTS provides is GUTS provides a automated, robust, and efficient way to migrate instances migrate resources, okay, not only the instances, resources. We can migrate anything from any cloud to any cloud, okay? So in this talk, I'm just concentrating only OpenStack as a destination, but using GUTS, we, can, we should be able to migrate the resources from OpenStack to VMware and OpenStack to AWS, even the vice versa is also possible, okay? <coughs> okay, so what GUTS do? GUTS migrates workloads. As I said, workload is nothing but, um, so it's a resource. It can be an instance, it can be a volume, it can be user application, it can be anything, okay? So um, it migrates the workload between traditional platform to the open stack, like VMware, uh, Hyper-V, AWS to, uh, to open stack, and public cloud to private cloud, okay? I just want to move out my VM from public to private, okay? So we can do that using GUTS, okay? And GUTS also migrates, this is the most important one. It has the more capabilities, it has more, more features in this. We can migrate instances or resources from OpenStack to OpenStack as well, okay? So we will see, um, okay, so this is what traditional virtualization platform to OpenStack, okay? So here we can migrate instances from VMware, AWS, Hyper-V, Etc. to open stack, okay? So if you go to public to private, so here you can use any public cloud, okay? So like AWS, Amazon, uh, Microsoft Azure, so anything, and you can migrate it to your own open stack private cloud, okay? So open stack to open stack. So why we need to move open, one open stack resource to another open stack resource? So what is the point there? So you know, right, so for every six months, new releases are coming up. So new features, new bugs, everything will be resolved. So it's a complete set of software for every six months, okay? So let us suppose I have deployed my private cloud. I have deployed my private cloud using ISAUS, okay? Now I just want to migrate it to, uh, migrate it to Mitak or Newton or Okata. So uh, what I have to do is, um, so I want to, I want my same instance to be there on the new version of OpenStack Cloud, okay? So to do that, we can use OpenStack, okay? So using OpenStack, we can, we can migrate instances, we can migrate all open, almost all OpenStack resources, okay? So, yeah. So OpenStack to OpenStack migration requires in this case, okay? So when we do the cloud upgradation, so when we, are, when we are upgrading the cloud or any maintenance phase, when we are moving the resources out of source OpenStack cloud to the destination OpenStack cloud, we can use GUTS, okay? So currently GUTS supports almost all the OpenStack releases from ISOs to the latest one, Okta, so, and it continues. It's not, it's not the limited, so it continues, okay? So now we can migrate instances, we can migrate any resource from Kilo to Newton, Kilo to Mitaka, or Mitaka to Okta, so anything, anything, any combination is possible. 
Okay. So in OpenStack to OpenStack migration, it can migrate, it can migrate almost all OpenStack resources. Like uh, uh, it can migrate tenants, it can migrate users, it can migrate security groups, key pairs, flavors, networks, volumes, and instances. Okay, this is just this is the current set of resources that we are supporting. In future, we can add more. We can add uh, heat stacks. We can add anything. So everything is pluggable. Okay, so we can easily add new resource types. Okay, so using this, what we can have is we can have the same set of same set of environment, same users, uh, same key, same key pairs with the same name. Okay, so but not the key is not the same, but with the same name. Okay, even flavors, security groups, everything will be there. Okay, so you will feel the same environment in the new cloud as well using GURDS. Okay, so this is what the advantage. And uh, so obviously, uh, we can migrate user applications as well. Uh, when we are migrating, uh, when we are migrating workload, when we are migrating volumes and instances, obviously, user will get the his own applications on the new cloud. Okay, so there is no doubt in that. Okay, so now uh, we came to know that, so the missing piece in the migration puzzle is GERTS, okay? So now let's know more about GERTS, how it is going to function, what are all the internal things and all. Okay, so GERTS is the distributed, interactive, synchronous, and pluggable product, okay? It follows, uh, it looks like all OpenStack, uh, remaining OpenStack components. So it is distributed and all, it is uh, synchronous, pluggable, everything. So it almost all, it, it has almost all OpenStack features. So it is distributed, okay? So like other OpenStack components have internal, uh, some internal components, right? So in the same way, GUTS have GUTS API, GUTS scheduler, and GUTS migration. So all these three will communicate through a messaging cubus. So, uh, so they, those three will be in sync, okay? So if you and those are interactive. So what GUTS do is, GUTS will interact with the source cloud RESTful APIs to get the information about the resources, and GUTS will also interact with the destination cloud RESTful APIs to create resources on the destination side. Okay, it knows how to how to communicate with. It knows how to communicate with source and destination clouds. Okay, let's suppose. Um, so when I'm going to add a new cloud, uh, Microsoft Azure, to support GUTS. Okay, so I should be able to. Uh, we should have a driver so which interacts with, uh, which interacts between GUTS and Microsoft Azure. And so that will be in synchronous. So let us suppose. Uh, I'm going to migrate, so using GUTS I can migrate one, two, hundreds of instances at a time, hundreds of resources at a time, okay? But uh, these many migration processes are going on at a single point of time, so there can be many synchronous issues will be there. But GUTS will follow uh, the synchronous, it will have all the logs and all, so everything will be very robust way, okay? So it will work in a robust way. And it's pluggable, okay? So um, like other OpenStack, other OpenStack components like Cinder, Nova, and all, it just follow the pluggable architecture. Like so in Cinder, if you know, the Cinder volume will be there, so we can add, uh, let's suppose if I'm, uh, okay, if LVM is there, or Gluster is there, or Ceph is there, they're going to have their own drivers. They're not going to disturb the core Cinder functionality, the core Cinder modules, they're just adding the new features, they're just adding the features to the driver's file. In the same way, GUTS doesn't know anything. GUTS doesn't care about any source cloud or destination cloud, any type of, uh, it, it doesn't know how to communicate with VMware or OpenStack. It doesn't know anything, okay? So what it will do is we have, um, so we have to write our own drivers to communicate with OpenStack or whatever the cloud that we want to support. So. So we, uh, we designed GERTS in such a way so we can add or remove uh, clouds so at any point of time so OpenStack operators can do that, okay? <coughs> so, um, so let us suppose uh, if, uh, if tomorrow if I want to add support to new type of cloud, I can do it. I can, I can do it using this pluggable architecture. So it has some set of uh, some set of uh, functionalities that uh, that we have to implement when we are adding a 
new cloud. Okay, so till now, um, so these are the these are the system components of GERTS. Okay, like other OpenStack services like Nova and all, we have uh, an API. So we have a scheduler and we have migration engine. Okay. So what GERTS API will do? Like other API services, this API service accepts and responds to the request from the end user API calls. Okay, and it enforces some policies like. Uh, Administrator can do these many things, and normal user can perform only these things. So, GUTS API will enforce all these policies on the operations. Okay, uh, by default, it listens on 7,000 port. Okay, I hope uh, none of the OpenStack services are using that port. So, it listens on 7,000 port. Okay, and if you go to the scheduler, it schedules the migration operation uh, to the appropriate migration node. Um, so we can have any number of migration services running. Uh, it is a it is completely distributed way, so that uh, we can have uh, GUTS API on one node, GUTS scheduler on another node, and we can have multiple GUTS migration node on separate nodes. Okay, so like uh, Nova Compute, Cinder Volume, like that. Okay, so here what GUTS scheduler will do is it will take the request from the API and it will forward it to the appropriate migration node. Okay, so, and also uh, what scheduler will do is it periodically collects the status of each and every migration node. It will know uh, for every one minute or every two minutes, again, it is configurable. So whether that migration node is up and running or not, how much conversion space available, how much free space available, uh, and um, so whether it is reachable, so everything, everything it will calculate. So based upon that, it will apply some filters, and then it will schedule it to the proper migration node. Okay, so yeah, and this is the actual migration engine. So guts migration. So this is the service we can uh, we can have multiple instances of this guts migration service. So uh, we can uh, so we can run on two uh, as many as many services as we want. Okay. This is uh, this daemon will do the actual operation. It will get the resource from the source cloud. It will get uh, it will create the resource on the destination. So in in the intermediate, we have many things to do like disk conversion, installing and uninstalling tools. Everything will be done using GUTS migration. Any doubts till now? Okay. So this is the architecture. So, uh, so we have we have GUTS API. So end user will communicate with GUTS API, and along with that we have GUTS client and Horizon client. So through clients, end user will communicate with GUTS API. So GUTS Python client is that, and we have a centralized GUTS database that can be MySQL or um, um, so Postgres SQL or anything. So. And we have common messaging queue bus that is RabbitMQ. So we are using by default. We can use QPI or GeoMQ or anything. So we are using GERD scheduler uh, to schedule the migrations to the to the underlying migration nodes. Okay. So these uh, these migrations will communicate with the underlying cloud environments. So those can be OpenStack, those can be VMware or Hyper-V. So anything. So you can see all. Um, I don't know the color, so it's uh, okay. So let's take it right. Okay, so those red colors all restful APIs. Okay, and if you see the green color, those are RPC calls. Okay, so this is the architecture. Now see what are what are all the features. So first of all, let's see what are all the OpenStack resources that GUT supports to migrate. So. GUTS can migrate instances, GUTS can migrate volumes, networks, security group, flavors, key pairs, etc. So, uh, so let us suppose if you um, if you want to migrate, if you have a specific tenant, in the tenant you have uh, you have some set of flavors, some set of key pairs, and all. If you want all those on the new cloud, you can migrate it in a single way. So, in a single attempt, you can migrate everything. Okay, so it will create same uh, same set of flavors, same set of key pairs. Security groups, everything. So, <clears throat> and one more uh, one more thing to point is so guts can also migrate ephemeral disk. Okay, so generally um, OpenStack in in Nova we cannot snapshot 
ephemeral disk okay we can snapshot only the root disk but uh, guts can even migrate the ephemeral disk space as well okay so it can migrate that disk as well and so when you're migrating the instance if any volume is attached to that instance even that will be migrated to the new cloud and attached to the destination instance okay so these are all the set of resources that we support in openstack and what gets uh, do other than uh, other than these resources so it also it also deal with hypervisor specific operations like um, so like it converts the disks let's suppose in vmware we have vmdk in openstack we in openstack kvm we support um, kickout so we have to do the conversion so guts will take care of that uh, so it, it will analyze which kind of source and destination cloud it is. Based on that, it will convert the disks and upload it to the destination. So, and it will also install and uninstall hypervisor specific tools like VMware tools, whatever tools, and, and anything. So, it depends upon the cloud, depends upon the source and destination cloud. So, um, <clears throat> so actually placing the guts migration service is the key point here okay so i will go to that in the next slides okay so okay and other than these features what are all the add-ons you have so we have developed um, horizon plugin so that uh, so guts ui can be configured um, can be accessible from the normal horizon like other other services in the open stack and we also have dev stack plugin so that we can um, we can automatically install GUTS, um, we can automatically install GUTS using DevStack as well by by using this DevStack plugin. And we have Ansible and Puppet modules. Um, so these are, these are the modules that we have. And it has some capabilities to roll back, OK? So GUTS, I mean, migration is not a simple process, OK? So it is a set of events. If something fails, it will roll back everything, and it will take to the uh, first step, okay, so that uh, the our infrastructure, our cloud is in a consistent way, okay. So and it will automatically clean up. So when the migration process ends, so it will clean up all the temporary resources that were created during the migration. Okay, so this um, I mean this explains the GUTS workflow, okay. So here, uh, this is a bit complicated. So um, yeah, you can see the top one is the GUTS node. OK, so it has Keystone. So GUTS using Keystone authentication. And it has other services, GUTS, API, scheduler, and migration. So and we have, uh, on the left-hand side, we have source clouds. And the destination side, I mean, right-hand side, we have destination clouds. OK, so let's take one example, which is pointed as one. Okay, so from VMware to VMware to OpenStack. Okay, so the red VM. Okay, so on source and destination, on both the things, we have GUTS migration service running. So uh, as it is VMware hypervisor, so that is, will be in the format of VMDK. Okay, so we have to convert them to kickout to. Okay, so as we have GUTS migration service running on both the hypervisors, both the clouds, we can do the migration operation at any time, so at any place, okay? So we can use either VMware's GUTS migration node uh, and, or OpenStack GUTS migration node. That's up to the scheduler. Scheduler will randomly pick up one migration, one migration node, okay? And schedule it to that one, okay? So that is how the migration will happen in the first case. If you look at the second case, which is a green VM, okay? Uh, from OpenStack to Hyper-V, okay? So when we are migrating the instance or a resource from OpenStack to Hyper-V. So <clears throat> on the Hyper-V, we have GUTS migration service running, but OpenStack cloud doesn't have any migration service. So all the conversion, all the migration process, uh, the engine will run on the Hyper-V side, OK? So what it will do is uh, the migration node, the migration service will pull all the resource details, resource data and all from the OpenStack source cloud and it will do the conversion there in the Hyper-V side and upload it to the Hyper-V, so and boot the instance there. So that's what the second case. If you look at the third case, when I'm trying to migrate the instance from Hyper-V to VMware, both the clouds doesn't have GUTS migration service running, okay? So 
I can use any of the other available GUTS migration node. Okay. So, for that instance, so I am using the top one, so GUTS migration. So, in this case what will happen is the entire resource, the data will be copied from Hyper-V2 GUTS node. It will convert, it will do some disk operations and all, uh, it will install and install some cloud specific tools and all and then again it will send it back to the VMware. Oh, is it? Yeah, to VMware. Okay. So, that is, that takes more time compared to earlier two cases. Okay. Because it has to, um, so <coughs> it has to upload the entire data from Hyper-V to GUTS node and again back to GUTS node to the VMware. Okay. So, this, this takes more time compared to first two cases. Okay. So, placing the GUTS migration service is the key point to reduce, to optimize the migration process. Okay, so <clears throat> we have some demo here. Um, uh, so actually, I thought uh, there will not be any internet available in this. So that's why I just captured few screenshots. Uh, so I am I'm, I'm just going to show those things. Okay, so this is CLI. This is using CLI. So here in this case, what I'm trying to do is. I'm, I'm trying to migrate, I'm trying to show the migration between VMware to OpenStack. So, VMware to OpenStack. So, here I have source cloud and destination cloud, okay. So, here the source will be the VMware and destination will be the OpenStack, okay. So, this is the command to add VMware source cloud, okay. So, I'm going to add a source cloud, so using GUTS source create. So, GUTS has its own Python client. So, using that we can add VMware source. So, so we have to pass all the credentials to that. Okay, so we have to pass uh, VSPR or VMware credentials to that. Like what is the username, password, what is on which host it is running, and which port we need to use and all. So all these things we have to pass it to the guts. Okay. So after that, if you do the guts source list, you can list out what are all the sources available. As I have added only one VSPR source, I can I can see only that one. Okay. And this is the command to add the destination OpenStack cloud. Okay, so in this case, I'm adding I'm adding OpenStack destination. So I'm passing all the parameters which are required to communicate with the OpenStack cloud, OpenStack destination cloud. Okay, so and what is the Neutron API it is using? What is the Cinder API? So Nova API? So everything. So it has some default values as well. But to be more specific, we need to uh, we need to give the actual API versions, actual API client versions, okay. So here uh, on the first on the first screenshot, you can see what are all the resources available. When I do GUTS resource list, so after adding the VMware source, what it will do is GUTS communicates with the source hypervisor. It will pull the list of resources available on the VMware source, okay. So those are the three resources available. So, test VM1, test VM2 and 3. So, these are the, these are the three VMs available. So, we can migrate any of those, any of those VMs to the destination OpenStack cloud. So, this below is the command to do that, okay. So, guts migration create, we can provide some name and we need to specify the ID of the resource or the name and we have to specify the destination, destination name. So, here the destination is OpenStack. So, after this, you can keep track of your migration. You can keep track of your migration operations. So if you see, uh, when I, uh, very first time when I'm doing GUTS list, okay, so it is showing the event as scheduling, mig scheduling migration host, okay. So it is trying to selecting the migration host, okay. It is trying to select the migration host and it is downloading instance disk from the source as the second status. If you look at the third one, it is converting the disk to kick out. So, as it is from VMDK to OpenStack, we have to convert the disk from VMDK to kick out, okay. And so, if you look at the fourth one, uploading it to the destination glance, okay. So, after that, at the end, you will get the success status. That means VM has been booted on the destination. So, you can also see what is the destination UID. What is the resource? Uh, what is the resource UID at the destination? Okay, so that is what updated in the last guts list command. Okay, so uh, this is the CLI example. So to migrate resources from VMware to OpenStack. Okay, 
and we also have UI demo, okay? So this migrates the resources between OpenStack to OpenStack, okay? So here I have already added the clouds, okay? So uh, <clears throat> the first one is, this first one shows the list of source clouds that I have. I have only one source cloud, which is OpenStack. And um, so that OpenStack version is, oh, it's very small, okay. So uh, first one is Kilo Open, so, oh, I mean Kilo version of OpenStack as source. And if you look at the destinations, so that is Mitaka. So in this case, I'm planning to migrate my resources from Kilo to Mitaka, okay. <coughs> So here, these are all the list of resources that I can get from the source VM, okay? So, and I can migrate, okay? I can create the migration operation. So in the migrate create operation, so what it will do is it will ask for many questions, like when you're, when you're trying to create a new VM on the Nova side, so it will ask you for availability zones, what kind of, um, uh, how much amount of RAM, so all, every, so all these things will be, all these things that we need to configure, right? So in the same way, it will ask for, uh, security groups, which keep it to use and all. If you are not providing anything, so it will try to take it, fetch it, fetch those things from the source, source cloud, source OpenStack cloud. Okay. So, <clears throat> yeah. So here uh, it is asking me to select the inst Okay. So give the instance name, flavor, network, security group, key pair, and uh, and all. So if I select the appropriate one, it will try to boot the instance on that particular security groups and all. So after that, I can, uh, so it's a, I mean, so we can directly show the status here. So it will keep on update status till it comes to active or maybe error as well. So, so this is, this is what uh, OpenStack to OpenStack migration between, um, so using UI, okay. So um, yeah, that's it. <coughs> Any questions? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so the question is, is it open source or not? So no, it's not open source. Uh, Sorry? Yeah. Oh, sorry, which VM? Yeah, it supports. Yeah, so over means. That depends on the source hypervisor. So in OpenStack, it supports uh, live snapshotting, right? So what we can do is, as instance is running, we can take a snapshot. So it doesn't have any downtime. So but uh, to more secure, if user wants more secure, then we will shut down the VM for some time, and we will take a snapshot, and again we will power it, power it back. Okay. So but uh, so that's again optional. Okay. So in some hypervisors, in some clouds. Okay, so that doesn't support live snapshotting. So at that time, we should download. We should down the VM, and we need to take the snapshot. Again, we should power it back. 
question here. Yeah. Um, in terms of commercial uh, offering, how you guys are uh, organizing these? This is a this is a software as a service pro, uh, uh, based. It. It's a license or subscription based. It. Uh, how Aptera is it's it's uh, uh, promoting the guts, and uh, even though even if you don't have these uh, already settled, but uh, how you guys yeah. are uh, thinking about going on? And secondly, the uh, what are the examples, not mention names, but, uh, you know, cases that you guys already have on production that you're do, working with? Uh, I, can, I can answer the commercial mm -hmm. side of things. All right. So, uh, basically, until now, we've kind of had it as an add-on to our consulting and managed services. So, a customer comes to us and goes, I'm doing this project, I want to migrate the VMs. We would include Guts as a part of it. Uh, we are looking at doing it on a per VM or a per migration basis, or we are open to partners coming to us and us bundling our solution with them. I mean, we are, we are a company that believes in open source and we are a company that believes in working with partners. So if there's a model a partner can think of, we'll be happy to work with it. Uh, as far as production is concerned, uh, most of our use cases have come from uh, kind of the big data side and also from, an, uh, from a, uh, where people have wanted to implement big data, but they're, they're stuck with VMware, and they decided to go with, dish the whole thing and s start afresh, and that's, we, we, we have about three or four of those in production right now. And another big uh, kind of use case that we have in production is when people have not upgraded their OpenStack for too long, and suddenly they're now looking at Icehouse to Newton, and they just, it's just easier to spin up another control plane and move the VMs across. Uh, thank you. That's, uh, uh, if, you, if you allow me, uh, this, uh, as, you, as you were answering, uh, one of the things that, uh, uh, what is the experience that you guys have? Because the scenario that you described, uh, customers that are currently using VMware and they're moving to a second generation cloud based on OpenStack, uh, that's what we are seeing uh, yeah. all over the place. Uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, a, a, an OpenStack distribution f from, let's say, Hat Hat or even Zeus mm -hmm. or Mirantis, uh, how the GUT solution fits into um, the supported configuration, meaning it's going to be deployed on top of, let's say, Hat Hat OpenStack Platform 10, and it won't be disrupting anything? How, how, how it works? So uh, GUTs will work on a standalone keystone. We don't need to be a part of destination or source. You give me a physical machine or you give me a VM, Perfect. and I can install Guts as a in-between with its own keystone, its own RabbitMQ. Uh, basically, we just want two public and API endpoints. We point to either the Nova, Neutron, whatever you want to migrate. If it's on a public API endpoint or an internal URL, if you want to avoid HTTPS. You, you use the API, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's and, it. and it just does the migration. Awesome. What we rely on is the vendors looking at the OpenStack interop certification and Got having it. those yeah. ticks. So if the API is broken, there's nothing we exactly. can do. Exactly. Right, but if the vendors are all doing the right thing, and so far we've, we haven't noticed a vendor who isn't following the API, Right, they might have added stuff, like there might be safe running, mm -hmm. but that's, that's something we take into account before we do the m migration. So for us, it's a very simple thing. If everyone is playing by the rules, if everyone has API compatibility, it's very simple for us to pull VMs from one and push them to the other side. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Not a problem, yeah. Yeah. Uh, reliability, yeah, that was, uh, I didn't mention that, but obviously it has the re reliability. So we are just keep, uh, it has a set of events, right? After every event, we are checking whether that event is successful or not. So if it is not successful, we'll re redo it again, and we will go back to the previous state so that we can maintain the consistency and reliability. Yeah, after creation in the destination side as well, we are um, we are just verifying whether uh, the same kind of data we have or not. So everything that we are verifying, so that we can have the same. Uh, uh, then only we are saying that this migration is successful. Okay, thank you.